We want to graph an equation here by plotting points. And what that means is we're just going to plug in any value at all that we want um, for x and then do the algebra and solve and see what the corresponding y value would be. And I actually have a wrong solution here and I'll work through and show how we can get the right solution. Um, so first, if I choose x to be 1, which this is where x is 1, let's see if that's the right point. So you plug a 1 in for x and then we're going to solve and see what y would be. So uh, 3 times 1 is 3 and then subtract 3 from both sides. So you get 2y is negative 6, and divide both sides by 2, and you get y should be negative 3. So that is the correct point. Um, when we plugged a 1 in, we got that y was negative 3. So that is a point on the line. Now, as long as we get one more point, we can connect those points with a straight line, and we'll be able to graph that line. So if we plug in 4, we get 3 times 4, which gives us 12. Subtract 12 from both sides, and you get negative 15 on the right. So now when you divide by 2, you get y is negative 15 over 2, which is negative 7 and a half. So this point should actually actually be down here at negative 7 and a half. And so that's not a very nice point to plot because... Um, you know, it's a half instead of a whole number. So actually, let me try a different number besides 4. Let's plug a, a 3 in and see what we get. So here I've plugged a 3 in for x. 3 times 3 is 9. When you subtract 9 from both sides, you'll get negative 12 on the right. Dividing by 2 gives us a nice whole number, negative 6. So we get another point on the line is 3, negative 6. So 3, negative 6 would be a point on the line. And... So this problem here illustrates that sometimes you'll plug a number in and it doesn't come out to a nice point to plot. Just go ahead and pick a different number. Um, try to use small numbers if you can, like we did in this example. We used 1 and 3 and 4. Um, you can pick larger things, but it just makes the problem simpler when you pick small values for x. And a last tip is if you can pick three points instead of just two, it's kind of a backup check to make sure your work is correct. Because you see I've got these three points here. Remember this one was correct. So if I draw a line that goes through two of the points, it should go through the third one as well if I've done all the work correct. And you see all three of those points are in on the same line, uh, which just verifies that I have the correct graph of the line. A similar problem here, we're going to graph this equation by plotting points, so we're just going to plug in values for x and uh, try to use values that come out to nice whole numbers. Um, so we'll start with this one. If you plug a 6 in for x, you'd get negative 6 for the x part, so add 6 to both sides, and you'd have 4y equals 12. Now when you divide both sides by 4, you get y is 3, so we get one of the points is right there at 6, 3. Now if you plug a 5 in, um, which this is the wrong solution here. We're going to show how to get the right one. If you plug a 5 in, you get a negative 5 there. You need to add 5 to both sides, so you get 4y is equal to 11. And when you divide by 4, you get 11 over 4, which is not a very nice number, so I really wouldn't use that in my plotting. But that's just under um, 3. It's 2 and 3 fourths. So just to illustrate, that would be about right here. All right, so I'm going to plug a different line or point in and try to get a nice whole number. And I'm just going to use uh, the fact that I know I'm going to be dividing by 4. So I want this, whenever I add what x is to the other side, I want this to end up being a multiple of 4. Uh, so if I put a positive 2 there, so if I make x to be 2, I'm going to have negative 2 uh, plus 4y equals 6. And because I know that 4 divides into 8, so here when I add 2 to both sides, I'm going to get 4y equals 8. And when I have to do that division by 4, I get a nice solution of 2. So I plug the 2 in for x, and then I got the y solution to be 2 as well. So that is another point on our line. and I have three points now. Um, the one of them was hard to graph because it was a fractional point, but when you draw a line connecting them, it'll go through all three of those. Um, this one was drawn a little off because it was that fraction, but 
That is the solution of our line. For this question, we are graphing two equations here on the same coordinate system. And I'll do this one first, y equals negative 4. And that's drawn correctly down here. Uh, no matter what you pick for x, no matter where we are on the x-axis, the y value should still be negative 4. So it's a horizontal line right here at y equals negative 4. So for this other one, y equals negative 4x, just pick values to plug in for x. I'll pick a 0 first. If you times that by 0, y equals negative 4 times 0, that comes out to 0. So 0, 0 should be a point. Pick another one if you pick 1 for x. y equals negative 4 times 1. So you get 1, negative 4. So 1 and then 1, 2, 3, 1, negative 4. And I'll, I'll do one more. I'll just pick a 2 for x. And that'd be y equals negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. So a third point is 2 and then negative 8, 6, 7, 8. And I always like to do 3, like I've mentioned in this video, because um, if you can connect the line and it actually goes through all three, it's like a safety net to check that you actually are graphing the correct line. Um, if all three lines, or if all three points lie along the same line, you can be confident that you're correct. For a question like this, we have the graph, and we need to determine which of the ordered pairs listed is a solution to the equation and select all that apply. What you want to do is just look for these points and see if they're actually on that graph. So um, negative 4, 0 would be this point right here, and it is on the line. It's on that graph, so it is a solution to the equation. 0, negative 2, likewise, on the graph, so it is a solution. And do that for all the choices. Any that actually lie on the line, those points are solutions to the equation. So looking at one here where we don't have any y in the equation, we just have x equals to negative 4. So basically that's saying it doesn't matter what y is, x is going to be negative 4 no matter what you put in here for y. So you could put a 1 in there for y. You could put a 0 in there for y. You could put a 2.75 in for y. It doesn't matter what you put in there for y, x is always equal to negative 4. And so we have a few points here. We can see what that would look like by plotting these points. Negative 4 if y is 1, negative 4 y is 0, negative 4 y is 10. That'd be up here off the graph. Negative 4, 2.75. We see we get a vertical line right here where x is negative 4. And so no matter what we use for y, x is always negative 4. And that's a vertical line right here at negative 4 on the x-axis.